Good morning, and once again, thank you for coming out to Queens County. We always enjoy having you here. It also means that we are doing good things between the NYPD and the Queens District Attorney's Office. I want to welcome Chief of Detectives James Essig, as well as Deputy Chief Jason Savino, who is the commanding officer of the Gun Violence Suppression Unit. Deputy Chief Jerry O'Sullivan is with us as well. Uh, from my team, hold on a second, in Queens County, I want to welcome uh, Jerry Brave. Well, I guess I'll just do it this way. Jerry Brave, uh, executive over uh, investigations, John Senate, the Bureau Chief of Violent Criminal Enterprise, Barry Frankenstein, who uh, is a deputy chief, uh, Diane Chopi, and Charles Dunn, all in the Violent Criminal Enterprise Bureau, thank you for the outstanding work on this case by the NYPD, especially the Department's Violence Reduction Task Force. Um, thank you and congratulations to everyone that is here today. This nearly three-year investigation focused on gun violence in Southeast Queens. Its purpose is to relieve communities that are terrorized by gun violence as an everyday part of their lives. To be clear, it is only a few people who caused this terror. When we arrested alleged gang members in Western Queens and other areas of this great borough, there was a clear reduction in shootings. And today, hopefully the neighborhoods today can take a breath. Our investigation resulted in one of the largest gang takedowns in the history of Queens County. Longtime veterans of this office are hard pressed to think of a bigger takedown than this one. So it could very well be the largest, but to be safe, I will limit myself. Without a doubt, this is one of the largest. 151 count indictment against 33 alleged gang members, five of those defendants of whom are charged with murder in two homicides. Everyone is charged with conspiracy to commit murder. Conspiracy is an infrequently used charge because of the complexity to prove. It takes resources. It takes hours of dedicated staff to ultimately prove that there is conspiracy to commit the violence at hand, that you are part of this agreement to commit murder against your rivals. In this indictment, there are charges for multiple murders, and all 33 are being charged with the conspiracy to commit those murders and of gang violence. Of the 33, and I want to be clear about this, of the 33 defendants in this indictment, 18 of the defendants pulled the trigger. To be clear, out of 33 of these defendants, 18 that are charged in this conspiracy are trigger pullers. Others are being charged with attempted murder, criminal possession of a weapon, reckless endangerment, and assault. More than 30 guns were seized through this investigation. At the heart of the indictment is a blood feud between Southeast Queens straight gangs to establish their territorial dominance. Money World is on one side, and local trap stars and never forget loyalty are on the other. While the gang war was set off by a slashing in April of 2019, the tensions and the violence between the warring factions escalated after the murder of 14-year-old Amir Griffin in October of 2019. Amir was playing basketball at the Baisley Park houses when he was shot by a member of Money World who mistook Amir for a member of the Trap Stars, the rival gang. Since Amir's murder, there has been 22 more shootings in this indictment alone. And besides Amir, one of those shootings was fatal. 13 were non-fatal. Six of those shootings resulted in the shooting of unintended targets. Six of the shootings resulted in the shootings of bystanders. The other fatal shooting came on New Year's Eve 2020. As we detail in the indictment, a young man sitting in his car on a busy street in Jamaica was gunned down. He was shot eight times because the Money World gang thought he had been involved in the non-fatal shooting earlier in that day of a Money World member. 
More recently in January, as we also detail in the indictment, a Money World member shot at local Trap Stars members, hitting one of them. An innocent bystander walking to a nearby deli was shot in the shoulder. In August of 2022, a gang member opened fire on the Baisley Park Gardens complex from a car. The shooter hit an innocent bystander, and he barely missed a seven-year-old. The indictment also details the shootout in front of a hotel just across the street from here and gunfire outside of Martin Van Buren High School. Very simply, gangs and guns, they are a lethal combination. Nobody's safe. Whether it's a 14-year-old like Amir Griffin playing basketball or a school teacher walking his dog or a mother running out to buy milk for her children all innocent bystanders of past shootings in the borough of Queens County. We have seen law-abiding New Yorkers peacefully going about their business, being killed by mindless gang violence. When we talk about going after the drivers of violent crime, we are talking about holding accountable the small minority responsible for the vast majority of the most dangerous criminal activity. It is a few individuals that can terrorize an entire community. We need to absolutely do everything we can to get the guns off the streets. It is one of the most important things we do in law enforcement to keep people safe. It's why we work with the NYPD's Gun Violence Suppression Unit and my Violent Criminal Enterprise Bureau is working with them every day for this critical activity. With that, I turn the podium over to Chief James Essek. Thank you, DA Katz. Thank you, DA Katz. Uh, with, with me today is uh, Chief Jason Savino, the Commanding Officer of the Gun Violence Suppression Division, and Chief Jerry O'Sullivan, the Investigative Chief of uh, Queen South. Their units are both uh, responsible for this investigation. So today, we are, we are here to announce the arrests of 27 members of two violent street gangs that have terrorized the streets of Southeast Queens the Money World Gang, a blood subset, and the local trap stars, a predominantly crip subset. Throughout this investigation, it was determined that members of these gangs intended to commit murder and shoot opposing gang members based solely on their alliances and territorial disputes. After a two-month-long grand jury, members of these gangs are facing consequences of their violent behavior. They are being charged with murder, attempted murder, assault, first degree, criminal possession of weapon, and conspiracy in the first and second degree. Before me are the 34 firearms taking off the streets of New York, seized during this investigation by the NYPD, two of which are ghost guns and two of which were used in homicides. I just want to say these cases are very difficult, in-depth investigations for both the police department and the DA's office. But it's shown time and time again, these targeted violent gang gun cases are very effective and necessary in stopping the violence in our streets. So once again, I'd like to thank all the police department members involved and the DA, uh, uh, DA Katz's uh, crew for the hard work in this. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Jason Savino, the commanding officer of the Gun Violence Suppression Division. Thank you, Chief, and thank you to the DA. You know, you started off saying this is becoming a little bit of a regular thing. Um, we were here uh, just about six weeks back, and we promised, we promised we would bring even more justice to our beautiful members of Queens, to do everything possible to decrease and eliminate gun violence, to keep our public safe. We let gang members know ahead of time that our mission and obligation would be fully dedicated to addressing the senseless gun violence that places our members of the community in harm's way. And as promised, we are standing here once again. Just so proud to announce that today, once again, our members of Queens are a bit safer, with some of the worst of the absolute worst now in custody. But before I go into the investigation, I just want to just extend extreme gratitude to our case detectives, John McHugh, George Bodenmiller, Carlos Segovia, 
and Daniel Schoberg. They all worked just so tremendously, along with many of our partners, which I'll ultimately I'll circle back to. But these detectives just showcased exceptional drive and determination towards one objective, keeping our public safe. I also have to mention just briefly our team leaders who supervised the case, Captains Ryan Gillis and Charles Campisi, along with Sergeants Jeffrey Liu and Matthew Lewis. They just provided just enormous guidance throughout the entire investigation and really enabled this accomplishment. So today's announcement, along with more to come, they show our teams will remain absolutely relentless in combating and depleting this irrational gun violence. Let's get right into the case. So Cash Globe and Sandlot are investigations into rival street gangs that fall under the blood and crip umbrellas. Namely, Money World, as mentioned earlier, a Mac Baller blood set, and local trap stars. Predominantly a crip set, but they do have a little bit of a mixed match of, of folks as well. Now, this case was initiated to combat violence in and around Jamaica, Queens, but it also extends into Hollis Park, Rosedale, and Springfield Gardens. Now, we utilized our next level precision policing policies and address the right subjects. You have to consider, even in the gang world, shooters are somewhat rare. This case targets those alphas of the gang that endanger themselves and, frankly, everyone around them. Case in point, of the 33 subjects, including in this jo joint investigation, 29 have been arrested prior for a shooting-related incident or are being charged with firing a gun on at least one occasion and 19 of the 33 have allegedly fired a gun more than once, more than once. Simply put, these are the trigger pullers, the small group of individuals that make it downright dangerous for the great people in our community. These are subjects that woke up every day just to live the life exclusively to benefit the gang. Their actions being dictated and judged by the amount of clout and credit they can provide to that gang. Now. How is clout gained in the gang world? One destructive way, by shooting at op oppositions. Shooting ops, as they call it, is glorified, with members actually keeping score and awarding points for shooting rivals, almost like it's a game. Let's speak to these gangs as a whole. Reckless, ruthless, and relentless. These gangs would shoot at their oppositions in the vicinity of densely, densely populated areas, and this includes the parks that our children's play in. The gangs on several occasions have shot numerous times into residences, no regards for anybody who was inside, so potentially horrific. And this was done strictly to send a message of gang dominance. Let's speak once again to the tragic incident that initiated this case, the murder of Amir Griffin. It demands repeating. 14 years young, a child, a promising basketball player, being looked at as a freshman in Cardoza High School. Such a bright future. Yet he was tragically struck with a bullet as a shooter fired three rounds from more than 225 feet away. That stray bullet falsely, falsely intended for who was believed to be a rival gang member. The shooter then boasting thereafter about dropping him. Zero regard for life. Take a moment to think about this. Amir offered hope. He offered hope to his family, to his community, really to all of us. Now I'm a cop, I'm also a father. Amir is exactly what we aspire our youth to be. And his life was suddenly halted due to gang members recklessly firing bullets with total disregard for anyone around them. I've said it many times and I have no problem repeating it. Fired bullets have no names. Again, fired bullets have no names. Now we cannot erase the pain all have suffered. But we will say, so humbly as we stand here, gangs cannot and will not intimidate our streets. Criminality does have consequence, and this is exactly what it looks like. So in all, 27 subjects are now in custody as a result of this dual investigation. I also want to mention, this is one of numerous takedowns our gun violence suppression teams, along with the detective squads, have initiated and there's much more to come. Spring is here and summer is approaching and we will not let up. We will continue to address every gang in this city, every street in this city, every trigger puller in this city. With that being said, if you're a gangbanger, 
if you are the worst of the worst, if you recklessly engage in gun violence and endanger our communities, if you're one of those few individuals that make life, daily life for our great people dangerous, uncomfortable, and feel no remorse about it, this is your opportunity. Change now. Do the right thing. Do it for your family. Do it for your community. But change now, or we may see you next. A lot of kudos real quick just to go around that made this happen. Our Queens investigative chief, Jerry O'Sullivan, really as good as a partner as there is, along with those Queen squads, that 103, 105, and 113 squads, along with the homicide squad, all worked the cases one throughout the investigation. Our DA, Ms. Katz, just dedicating your team's partnership. John Sennett in particular, just a godsend, Barry Frankenstein, Deanna Chopi, and uh, Charles Dunn, just such a challenging and robust case, and they seamlessly held everything together. Our leader, Chief of Detectives, Jimmy Essick, we really just couldn't ask for a better mentoring coach. And lastly, and perhaps most noteworthy, just a special thanks to the community that we serve. Our community. This is why we became cops, to improve the quality of life for everybody, be the gatekeepers of this beautiful city, and keep all of our members safe. We collectively tackled this mission as one cohesive team, and as a result, our community is safer. With that, I'll pass it over to our partner, Jerry O'Sullivan. Thank you, Jason. I'll be quick. I just want to say uh, I want to thank everybody for their uh, collective efforts for coming here today. I can, and I want to honestly say, from my opinion, that the streets of South Jamaica, Queens, are a much safer place as a result of the events uh, leading up to this uh, takedown. And it's the collective efforts of the district attorney, uh, gun violence, 113 squad, VCS, and the 113, um, and, and homicide and gun violence. I want to thank everybody. And just to finalize with the, uh, the Amir Griffin homicide, that's one of those things I'll never forget. Uh, in my career, I was a commanding officer of the 113 precinct. And just to put things in perspective, uh, Amir wasn't playing basketball by himself. We had two cops clo uh, assigned to that basketball court also. And for uh, gang members to feel comfortable enough to bring a gun to the vicinity of a basketball court where cops are and to shoot and hit an innocent person, that is completely unacceptable. And as the district attorney mentioned today, uh, numerous occasions that were, there were innocent people that were hit as a result of gunfire, again, unacceptable. And different times of the day, school hours and late at night. The streets are a lot safer as a result of this, and I wanted to thank uh, my, my partners here in the district attorney's office, and I want, I'm very proud of the hard work that was done by the, my, uh, the, my colleagues in the detective bureau. Thank you very much. On topic questions? Anybody? On topic, and just, just, so we're just so we're clear before you do on topic questions, the status of the defendants, because uh, we heard the numbers were a little different. So 15 of the defendants have been arraigned on this indictment. Three are awaiting extradition from North Carolina or Jersey. Three are um, awaiting arraignment. Uh, they've been arrested, but awaiting arraignment. Eight are already incarcerated on other matters and four are outstanding, and the NYPD is actively searching for them. Anything else? So, uh, excuse me, uh, Sean Brown was arrested and indicted in connection with Amir Griffin's death. What ever became of that? Well, he was, yes, he was arraigned. He was, uh, he was indicted. He was arraigned. We included that uh, arrest and arraignment and indictment in this indictment as well. We superseded it. Uh, and so he will be held accountable pursuant to this indictment as well. He is already incarcerated uh, pre-trial on the uh, murder. Any idea where he's being held? I don't know where he's been. I mean, I, we, Rikers is where most people are being held. Pre-trial. I became the district attorney uh, soon after Amir Griffin was murdered. Uh, and, you know, we worked with the NYPD and at that point uh, made a decision to investigate the environment in which people are raising their families and that folks want to be able to walk to school and grandparents want to be able to sit on a park bench and the environment uh, of gun violence and the continuous fear that people were living in. 
um, was, I thought, worthy of investigation. The NYPD thought was worthy of investigation. Uh, and today we're here as a culmination of a three-year uh, work between the two of our departments. And I'll have uh, Chief Essek comment as well. One of the reasons why we start these investigations is because they're gang-on-gang -gang shootings. And very rarely will a gang member come forward and testify or ID the shooter. Uh, and the, the innocent people that get hit by this gun violence can't ID the person. So we, have to, we came up with a way, and this was the Gun Violence Suppression Division six years ago, in how to investigate this, these, these, as Jason said, the trigger pullers. So what we do is we work with the local squads, gathering evidence, witnesses, video collection, a whole bunch of other techniques, ballistics comparisons, and we're able to, through mountains of evidence, now this is a three-year investigation, it's a two-month grand jury where they're presented with all those evidence, the conspiracies, them, the people talking back and forth to each other, the interviews uh, of witnesses and perpetrators, and we're able to present to the grand jury and get these indictments. You know, sometimes the trigger is also to start these investigations, the commitment to put the time and resources into the investigation as well. It was a special grand jury. Uh, we had a three-month grand jury between this indictment and the Woodside and the Story indictment that we all were here, I think, to announce about two months ago. Um, I don't know, thousands of staff power uh, that goes into these investigations on both sides, the NYPD and my office, and the commitment to make sure that the, the neighborhood is safer. Can you provide any information on the weapons recovered? I mean, they seem similar, and I don't know if you know sure the can. source. Mm -hmm. If they're coming from a certain state, how are the so guns yeah, members obtaining the guns? Mm -hmm. Two ghost guns. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the two guns on the end, they're the ghost guns. The two ghost guns recovered. As in all our investigations, we trace back. We do traces for the source states. Pennsylvania and Carolina uh, are where most of the guns coming from. We then work with our partners in our Joint Firearms Task Force, the ATF, and go back and start, if, if possible, a new investigation on how these weapons came up. Ladies and gentlemen, we will uh, no doubt see you right here again very soon. Thank you. And thank you for coming out.